Indiana, aka Pop Culture Diva 42, and this is the second episode in my Batman retrospective dealing with the Batman and Robin serial from 1949. Straight off the bat, I want to say that from the first episode, I noticed that this serial was a vast improvement in terms of production values and cinematography, and everything just looked more expensive, better put together, more professional. Like, it made the first serial look like something that was cropped together in a garage or something like that. Straight off the bat, there were also things about it that I really didn't like and kept on not liking until the end. The first and most important out of these um, is Robin. The guy who played Robin was so weak, like no acting ability whatsoever. The guy who played Batman slash Bruce Wayne is kind of on the same level as the guy who played Batman in the first serial, he's just less attractive. I also think this serial presented an improvement in terms of story, story structure in the sense that there were things happening in it that actually surprised me. The central villain this time around is the wizard and the wizard develops a kind of strange aggressive technology that the, ro the remote control machine I think it was called, it does all kinds of crazy stuff including um, stopping trains and machines and turning people invisible and stuff like that. So I think maybe it's kind of like an EMP gun that also like makes people invisible. So a big thing for the serial was to suss out the identity of the wizard. And honestly, when they finally did that, I kind of did not see it coming. And I'm the kind of person that I can kind of figure out when you need to when a certain story has to unveil the killer or the mysterious figure or something like that. Usually I kind of figure it out, but in this case I really, wow, I really did not expect the wizard to be the person that they made it out, that eventually it, it turned out to be. Also there were other little subplots going on which added weight to the story. It is all about Batman and Robin versus the wizard, but there were other little things going on that kind of added weight to it and didn't make it seem so simplistic. Also worth mentioning, this serial also had 15 chapters. So that's 15 chapters about of about 15 minutes each. I was also pleasantly surprised that Batman and Robin got more shit to do in the sense that in the first serial it was pretty much like Batman and Robin walking around and oh, there, there are some guys, let's go fight with them and get our asses kicked. And that was pretty much the extent of what Batman and Robin would do in that first serial. This time there's a little more detective work going on, there's a little more investigative work going on. Like I said, there's, uh, there's the big mystery of figuring out who the wizard is. There are other little things going on at the same time. So Batman and Robin do get more things to do. Still no mention of Batman or Robin's origin story though. Unfortunately, I think it's very sad that despite the fact that this serial is such a vast improvement over the first one in terms of story structure and production values, that there were such glaring logical mistakes in it and plot holes to the extent where I'm going like, did they switch like production teams every episode? Did they switch scriptwriters and directors? Did nobody remember what they shot like a week before? All throughout the serial, there is a certain character that is in a wheelchair and it's very important to the story that he is in a wheelchair and I think in one of the later chapters, like in chapter 13 or something like that, all of a sudden he's walking around and nobody is saying anything and nobody's noticing that the guy that was freaking handicapped for 90% of this story all of a sudden is walking around. And even if overall the show does look more expensive and it looks like they placed more money into it, they really cut corners when it came to the Batmobile. There is no Batmobile to speak of. It's just a car that they're driving around. And it's like, again, it's taking me completely out of the story to see Batman and Robin driving around in just a regular car. And at some point, Vicky Vale, who is in this show, and as I understand it, it's her first appearance ever. After this, she was in the comic books. Vicky Vale at some point asked Batman, why the hell are you driving Bruce Wayne's car? And he's like, well, pff, he lends it to me or something of, to, of the sort. And I'm like, do these people not see that Bruce Wayne is Batman? How can you not see that? And why am I talking like Kirk? 
And also, which also gets me thinking, Bruce Wayne only has one car? Like, how rich is he? So overall, I think this was definitely a progress over the first one, and, you know, it goes to show that there's nothing really inherently wrong with the serial format, since there was such an obvious progression, and it could have ended up to be, you know, like, an hour and a half worth of a nice little Batman and Robin movie from the 40s. Unfortunately, there were some huge, huge logic mistakes in this. They're really, like I said, I, I doubt that the same people outside of the actors worked on this from end from beginning to end.